Hello friends, I am Dr. Rangeen Pallav Tripathi. I am a faculty of law at National Law University, Odessa. And today, we will be discussing the module of Excusable Defenses, Part B. The objectives of this module are the following. To understand the excusable defenses based on consent of the person being harmed or on the consent of his or her guardian. To understand the meaning of the term consent as used in the Indian Penal Code. To understand the excusable defense of doing a beneficial act without the consent of another person. To understand the excusable defense of communication made in good faith. To understand the excusable defense of acts done under compulsion. Then to understand the excusable defense of trivial acts. This module shall deal with the following specific excusable defenses under the Indian Penal Code. First, act done with consent. Second, beneficial act done with consent. Third, act done for child or for insane person with the consent of the guardian. Fourth, beneficial act done without consent. Then, communication made in good faith. Sixth, acts done under compulsion and seventh trivial acts the idea of the consent of the person to whom harm has been caused is an important principle in section 87 88 and 89 of the indian penal code what constitutes of consent has not been explained or defined in the indian penal code however Section 90 provides certain prescriptive norms regarding what does not amount to consent. So before we begin our discussion on the defenses which are based on the consent of a person, it is important for us to understand what is the meaning of consent within the scheme of the Indian Penal Code. According to Section 90, a consent given by a person will not be considered as consent intended by any of the sections of the Indian Penal Code under the following circumstances. That is, when a consent is given under fear of injury or misconception of fact and the person committing the act knows or has reason to believe the consent has been given due to such fear or misconception. Second, when consent is given by a person who due to the unsoundness of his mind is not able to understand the nature and consequences of the act for which he is giving consent. Third, when the consent is given by a person who is under 12 years of age. When consent is given under fear or misconception, to claim that the same should not qualify as a consent under the Indian Penal Code, it is necessary that the person who is doing the alleged act because of the consent is aware that the consent was given in such circumstances. Let's consider the example below. Y has given his consent to X for a dangerous stunt where X will break bricks placed on the chest of Y with a hammer. X has threatened Y that if he does not agree for the stunt, X's associates will beat him up. The consent given to X is invalid as Y gave his consent under fear of getting beaten up. Now if we change the facts a bit, let's consider another example. Y has given his consent to X for a dangerous stunt where X will break bricks placed on the chest of Y with a hammer. Z has threatened Y that if he does not agree for the stunt, Z's associates will beat him up. X is not aware that Y has agreed due to the threats of Z. Though Y gave his consent under fear, X was not aware of the same. The consent given to X will not be invalid under section 90 and it will count as a valid consent. Now let's deal with the individual exceptions, the individual defenses which are based on the idea of consent. First is act done with consent under section 87. Section 87 provides exemption from criminal liability under the following circumstances. First, X does something which causes harm to Y. The thing done by X 
is not intended to cause death or grievous hurt third it is not known by x that the act is likely to cause death or grievous hurt fourth y has given consent to x for doing such work either impliedly or explicitly and to suffer harm fifth y is above the age of 18 years section 87 incorporates the legal maxim which is known as voluntary non fit injuria literally it means to a willing person injury is not done thus any harm suffered by a person to which he has consented does not create criminal liability as long as there was no intention to cause death or grievous hurt or no knowledge that the act is likely to result in death or grievous hurt let's consider an example x and y agree to practice wrestling with each other this agreement implies consent on the part of both x and y to suffer any harm as a result of wrestling if y suffers any harm while wrestling x will not be liable let's consider another example y wants to die he requests x to kill him based on the consent of y x shoots y with a gun in this case x is not protected under section 87 as consent is given for causing death is not covered under section 87 for section 87 to be applied the act which is being committed must not be such which will cause the death of a person or cause grievous hurt to a person now let's deal with the next defense which is based on the idea of consent beneficial act done with consent in order for an act to be excused under section 88 the following ingredients need to be proved first x does something which harms y second the act was not done with the intention of causing death third the act was done in good faith for the benefit of y then y has given consent either expressly or impliedly to suffer the harm or take the risk of the harm section 88 expands the situational domain in comparison to section 87 x as x will be protected even if the act was done by him with the intention to cause grievous hurt under section 87 consent by y to suffer grievous hurt is not valid however under section 88 consent to suffer grievous hurt is valid the additional condition to justify this expansion is the fact that the act being done is for the benefit of y under section 87 a simple consent of y will be sufficient but for a matter to be considered under section 88 apart from the consent of y the act must be for the benefit of y it is for this reason that section 88 allows for consent to be given for more severe harm such as causing grievous hurt it is for this reason that section 87 88 allows for consent to be given for suffering more severe harm such as being harmed with grievous hurt let's consider this example why has a brain tumor he consents to a surgical operation which is to be performed by x x is not responsible for any harm which may be caused to y while performing the surgery it needs to be noted that both under section 87 and 88 why may suffer why may suffer more harm than he had anticipated however as long as the other requirements of section 87 and 88 are satisfied x will not be liable thus under section 87 even if death or grievous hurt is caused x will not be liable as long as he did not commit the act with the intention of causing death or grievous hurt or with the knowledge that death or grievous hurt may be caused however in such circumstances x should not have been negligent or no foul play should have been involved under section 88 the only requirement is that the act must not have been committed with the intention of causing death thus even if x knew that death is likely to be caused 
but committed the act without the intention of causing death he is protected as long as he has acted in good faith now we'll deal with the excusable defense which is an act done for a child or an insane person with the consent of a guardian in order for an act to be excused under section 89 of the indian penal code the following must happen x does something which causes harm to y x commits that act in good faith for the benefit of y who is either under 12 years of age or is a person of unsound mind x is the guardian of y and he does that thing with the consent express or implied of the guardian or other person having the lawful charge of y that is x either must himself be the guardian of y or he does the act with the consent of whoever is the guardian of y fourthly x has neither intentionally caused the death of y nor attempted to cause the death of y fifthly x has not done something which he knows is likely to cause death unless he did it to prevent the death or grievous hurt curing of grievous disease or infirmity sixth x has not voluntarily caused grievous hurt or attempted to cause grievous hurt unless he did it to prevent the death or grievous hurt curing of grievous disease or infirmity section 89 mandates that it will not extend to the abatement of any offense if it does not already extend to the actual commission of such offense section 89 has a similar ethos to section 88 with the vital difference being that the responsibility of giving consent is transferred to the guardian section 88 excuses x from the harm inflicted by him on y if y consented to the same and the act was for the benefit of y children and persons of unsound mind are not deemed capable of making a judgment regarding the nature of facts and also what is beneficial to them and what is not beneficial to them thus that power has been given to the guardians if a guardian can himself do the thing which may cause harm or can permit somebody else to cause harm in order to benefit the child or a person of unsound mind then he will be protected let's consider this example x intentionally kills his daughter y when his village is raided by bandits so that she is not abducted by them in this case x is not entitled to the protection of section 89 as he has intentionally caused the death of y let's consider another example y has been suffering from a prolonged illness which has completely paralyzed him despite all the efforts of various doctors his condition has not improved y's father x permits z a doctor to administer an experimental drug on y x is aware that being a new drug the side effects may cause the death of y y dies after administration of the drug this situation is covered under section 89 though x permitted the administration of drug knowing the drug death is likely to be caused he did it to cure y from paralysis now we move on to the next excusable defense which is beneficial act done without consent situations may arise where something needs to be done for the benefit of a person without the opportunity to obtain his consent in such scenarios it would be unfair to hold a person liable who in good faith was trying to help section 92 deals with such scenarios where criminal liability is excused even when an act is done without the consent of the concerned person if it is being done in good faith for his benefit section 92 has the following ingredients x has done something which has caused harm to y x has committed the act in good faith for the benefit of y y has not given his consent to x and x has committed the act in circumstances where it was not possible for y to give his consent or y was incapable of giving his consent and y's guardian could not be contacted in time for the beneficial act to be done x has neither intentionally caused the death of y nor attempted to cause the death of y 
X has not done something which he knows is likely to cause death unless he did it to prevent the death or grievous hurt or curing of any grievous disease or infirmity. X has not voluntarily caused hurt or attempted to cause hurt unless he did it to prevent the death or grievous hurt or the curing of any grievous disease or infirmity. As is section 89, section 93 prescribes that it will not extend to the abatement of any offence if it does not already extend to the actual commission of such an offence. Let's consider an example. Y is being attacked by an elephant. X fires at the elephant knowing that the bullet might also hit Y. Y is severely injured by the bullet. X is not liable for the injury caused to Y. Let's consider another example. X, a doctor, finds Y, a person of unsound mind, to be suffering from a heart attack in the street. X immediately rushes into the hospital and performs the necessary surgery to save his life. X did not take the permission from Y or Y's guardians, but he will still not be responsible for any harm which may be caused to Y as he did not have the time to contact the guardians. Because these earlier exceptions are based on the idea of the act being for the benefit of a person, it's also important for us to understand what is meant by benefit. The explanation to section 92 clarifies that mere pecuniary benefit is not benefit as contemplated under sections 88, 89 and 92. To qualify as benefit, it must be some tangible and personal benefit to the person who is being harmed. The benefit for which the act is being done should outweigh the harm or injury which is being inflicted. Now let's move on to the next excusable defense. When any harm is caused in reaction to a communication made in good faith, the person making the communication is not responsible for the harm caused as long as the communication was made for the benefit of the person and in good faith. Good faith refers to a state of mind where the person is taking due care and attention. When a person does something without taking due care and attention, the act is not said to be in good faith even if the intention could have been bona fide. Let's take an example. Why is admitted to the hospital after falling severely sick. He is diagnosed with AIDS and X, his doctors, informs him that the chances of his survival are slim. Shocked by this revelation, Y suffers a cardiac arrest and dies. X is not responsible for the death of Y. X has made the communication in good faith and revelation of the true condition of its health is to the benefit of Y as he can then make plans for his will or may make other arrangement concerning his treatment or family. Now let's move on to the excusable defense of acts done under compulsion. The foundation of criminal liability is based on a person doing something prohibited by law of his own accord. Thus, if a person commits an act because of threat, he is entitled to be considered in a different perspective. Section 94 excuses a man acting under threat in the following circumstances. X commits an offence. The offence is not murder or an offence against the state punishable with death. X commits the offence as he is compelled to do so by threats. The threats were of a nature which reasonably caused X to apprehend that instant death will be the consequence if he does not commit the offence. Then X has not uh, of his own accord placed himself in a situation where he could be so threatened and X has not under threat of any other harm less than instant death placed himself in a situation where he could be so threatened. The fear of instant death is recognized by section 94 as providing as ex an exemption from criminal liability. Fear of any other bodily injury or even fear of death at some point of time in future is not an excuse under section 94. However, even when facing one's own death, a person is not committed to kill another or commit an offence against the state which is punishable with death. 
Let's consider this example. X is apprehended by a gang of dacoits. They threaten to break his leg if he does not help them in robbing Y. X is not protected under section 94 as the threat under which he acted was not a threat of instant death. Let's consider another example. X is apprehended by a gang of dacoits. They threaten to shoot him immediately if he does not help them in robbing Y. X in this case is protected under section 94. Now, let's discuss the excusable defense of trivial acts. Section 95 incorporates in the Indian Penal Code the maxim de minimis non curat lex, which means that the law does not take into account trifles. Holding a person liable under criminal law is a serious affair with far-reaching consequences on the person who is convicted. In life, there are many minor matters which should not consume the energy and resources of the criminal justice system. Section 95 provides the following. X does an act which causes harm to Y. The harm caused to Y is so slight that no person of ordinary prudence and temper will complain about it. Section 95 is intended to ignore such everyday occurrences which though technically may come under the purview of criminal law are so trivial that a claim in that regard should not legitimately be maintained. For example, X steps on the stores of Y while getting on a crowded train. In this situation, X cannot be held liable as the harm caused to Y is so trivial and negligible that it would be a waste of time for the criminal justice system to spend its resources on it. There are many matters, issues and disputes in society so minor that they should not be dragged into the criminal courts. If we have to summarize this module, the following points should be kept in mind. Consent given by a person is not as contemplated in IPC when consent is given under fear of injury and the person committing the act is aware. The consent given under misconception of fact and the person committing the act is aware. When consent is given by a person who is due to the unsoundness of his mind is not able to understand the nature and consequences of the act for which he is giving consent. And fourthly, when the consent is being given by a person who is under 12 years of age. Section 87 incorporates the legal maxim of voluntary non-fit injuria, which literally means to a willing person injury is not done. Thus, any harm suffered by a person to which he has consented does not create a, create a criminal liability as long as there was no intention to cause death or grievous hurt or no knowledge that the act is likely to result in death or grievous hurt. Under Section 88, any harm suffered by a person which to which he has consented does not create a criminal liability as long as there was no intention to cause that and that the act was done for his benefit. Under section 89, any harm inflicted on Y by X or with the consent of X will not constitute an offense if Y is a minor or a person of unsound mind and the act was done in a good faith for the benefit of Y and if X is the guardian of Y. Under section 92, any harm inflicted on Y by X will not constitute an offence even if Y has not given his consent, if act was done in good faith for the benefit of Y and it was not possible to obtain the consent of Y. Any harm inflicted due to communication made in good faith for the benefit of a person is not an offence. Commission of any offence other than murder or an offence against a state punishable by death is excusable if the person was compelled to do so under threat giving rise to apprehension of instant death. It is not an offence if the harm caused is so slight and so trivial that no man or ordinary man of ordinary temper or prudence will complain about it. That would be all. Thank you.